everyone, Sean Frangella here with the second part of our Adobe Fuse tutorial series where we'll be talking about customizing our character model and editing the geometry and everything you can do with that portion of the program. If you didn't check out the first part where we talked about assembling a character and getting started in Fuse, be sure to check that out if you want to start from the beginning and learn how we got to this point. So now that we have our 3D model set up, the next thing we can do is really start to adjust and customize our model and really tweak a lot of the settings of how it's built. So still in our assemble view, if we get our arrow tool, we can pick any of our character model pieces. So say we wanna edit our head, we can click that and just move in here. And you'll notice these blue highlights pop up. And what that means is we can actually grab any of those and drag the mouse left, right, up and down. And it's gonna adjust symmetrically how each of those little settings is built. So you can see there's quite a lot of customization you can do on every little part from everything to the cheekbones, the nose, lots of settings for the eye sockets, the eyelids, the ears, really everything you would wanna be able to customize with a 3D character model design without having to actually get in there and tweak the geometry and vertices. And if we turn on our wireframe and texture view right here, we can see that as we're adjusting this, it's actually moving around and adjusting our wireframe of the model and automatically re-snapping our materials of our character onto those new settings. So that's pretty cool. And if we jump into customize in this tab right here, as we're doing this, we can see that anywhere we click and start to drag on the top right, it's gonna have this section that's active region. And we can see it's actually logging all of this in these little meters and doing this mathematically by adjusting these sliders. So we can push and pull visually in this UI or if we go over here with our meters, we could adjust those settings. So there's an incredible amount of customization options for this, whether we wanna adjust things visually and just kind of build our character out from there, or if we wanna get a little more control as we're pushing and pulling things and just adjust these sliders to really refine things after we get it started. So as an example, if we grab the arms for each of these, there's many settings. If we just look at the arms alone, there's all these settings for the biceps, the overall arms, the forearms, hands, fingers, shoulders, and wrists. And if we grab any of these sections, there's an entire amount of customization settings that we can adjust visually or through our sliders to really customize our character. And on each of these, you'll notice there's this randomize button and reset. So if we just wanted to see a couple different quick looks, we could click randomize and it's gonna totally change what our model looks like. And if we wanna go back, we can do command Z to undo those. And if we wanna get a completely custom model look, we could click randomize all and it's gonna randomize all of our settings and give us a totally different result. And I'll just back up and undo those. Now, if we go closer into our head, into our head. There's actually a lot of settings on our head from everything to the shape of the head and ears and skull to settings like our eyes, our eyebrows, our ears, and everything that the head is made up of. In addition to all the head settings that'll impact the shape of everything, we can also go to face and that lets us change the expressions of the face so we can adjust meters to make him look more angry, awkward, confused, all sorts of settings, as well as open and close the mouth and adjust the placement of the eyes. And now that the mouth is open, we can even go down here and click teeth. And we have a bunch of settings for how we're impacting the teeth. So we can impact where the teeth fall, what type of teeth they are, if they're straight or crooked, how high vertically they are, and a ton of little stuff with just moving around our placement of our teeth. So there's a lot of settings you can really adjust. Again, either visually, if you want to just mold it like clay, or get into these meters and really refine what this guy is looking like without having to really worry about breaking our geometry. Now, if you want a little more customization and the feel of a full 3D program where you can't actually push the geometry, if we go into this bottom tool, for modified geometry directly. That's gonna give us this little 
circle editor, and we can see it's lighting up different vertices. And if we turn on our wireframe shader and move these, we can see that this is actually letting us edit our geometry. Now that lets you fully edit the vertices and where they fall. So things can get a little wacky if you really push things too far and make weird bulges, but it does let you completely edit the actual vertices of this if you really wanted to push this or if you didn't want it to be completely symmetrical. And the way we can use this is there's this modifier size. So if we make that bigger, you can see it's making that selection much bigger and we can edit the hardness, which is adjusting our fall off of this. So if we have it completely hard, you can see there's not much feathering on the edges. If it's completely soft, you can see it's really blending the edges there. And we could turn on symmetry if we want to edit this directly, but have it be symmetrical. So that'll just give you one extra option for really customizing this. If you feel like you still can't get the exact results you want from live editing it, or if you want to really customize this and make it not completely symmetrical, you have the opportunity to do that as well. So you can do a lot with customizing this and really make a completely unique character as well as edit things live. And next we'll get into how to add pre-built clothing and materials to our character model. So be sure to keep watching and continue on to that one if you wanna learn more about working with Fuse. And if you just wanna skip ahead and learn about what you can do with these models by bringing them into either Photoshop or Cinema 4D, be sure to check out those videos as well where we'll talk about what the hell you can do with these models when you're done building it. And if you wanna see more tutorials on VFX 3D animation and motion graphics, you can subscribe to the channel at youtube.com slash Sean Frangella. And you can hit me up on Twitter, I'm at Sean Frangella. If you have any questions, wanna request tutorials, or like talking on the social media, as always, thanks for watching. I will see you at the next video. Do you like watching these tutorials and want to see more episodes more often? You can help keep the show going by lending your support on Patreon at patreon.com slash seanfrangella. More importantly, if you want to throw in a couple extra bucks, you can get bonus content like project files used in the tutorials, answers to direct questions, live hangouts for questions, and even request specific tutorial topics for me to use for my next video. Also be sure to subscribe to the show by clicking the subscribe button or visiting the show homepage at youtube.com slash seanfrangella. And if you're hip with social media and have a question about this tutorial, you can find me on Twitter at Sean Frangella. As always, thanks for watching and I will see you at the next video.